We have three key checkpoints here. Yep. Setup position. Shaft is very vertical. I'm close to the ball. Those are kind of the main ones. Yep. When I make my backswing, the club head and the grip are trying to move at one rate as I go back. That's correct. It's like a putting stroke with a pivot. When I come through, I'm trying to keep my body turning with a reasonable size belly, club head at the ground, and my chest is up towards the sky. I, those are foundational principles of basic chip and run. That, yep. that was perfect. All right, guys, before we dive into this video, I do want to let you know we have launched these uh, golf school dates for 2020 at the Bethlehem Golf Club. We're going to go ahead and put the link in the description down below. Would love for you to come spend two days with me in Bethlehem, PA this summer. Now, if you can't come for in-person coaching, would still love to coach you through CogornoGolf.com. That's our online community and membership site full of golfers like you and I looking to get better. It's where you can send in your swing videos and I can help see your swing and help take your game to the next level. You also get access to everything, including our Facebook group where you can post your swings I just mentioned. You get all of our master classes. You get the practice section, the quick fix section, and the member library on the site. Would love to see you there. Now in today's video, we're going to talk about three key checkpoints to the perfect bump and run. And on our quest to bring you the best of the best, I'm going to bring in with me in a moment, Mr. Robert McMillan. Uh, Robert is a teaching professional out of the Bear Creek Golf Club in Fort Worth, Texas. He's a former European tour player. He even played in the British Open. I'm going to let him talk to you a little bit more about that. We're going to bring him in. We're going to talk a little bit about what he learned while he was out there playing the European tour and help you hit uh, the better bump and run. All right, guys, with us today, Mr. Robert McMillan. Thanks for having us out, my All friend. Right. Great to see you. Appreciate Thanks for it. being here, absolutely. So we're going to talk a little bit about the bump and run and give them a couple key checkpoints to look for. But before we dive into that, I guess you used to play golf at a pretty high level. Not uh, bad. And Not even bad. spend some time <laughs> around guys that were pretty good, including yeah. a little time maybe from afar with Seve. And uh, if you would, before we uh, hop into the bump and run, talk a little bit about uh, your time out there and some of the time with Seve and sort of what you saw from him when he was doing his short game. I think what I really learned from Seve most of all was his creativity. Yeah. And it wasn't always a lob wedge or a high lofted club. It was always, he always looked at the ground first and used the undulations. Now playing on the European tour, we tend to have more of that than you would in America. Courses are a bit more lush yeah. and very soft. So players like to hit the ball high up in the air, but there's going to be a lot of situations in dormant grass in the off season where you have to utilize a bump and run. And I think what we'll talk about today and the things I learned a little bit from Savvy would really help your viewers uh, get better at the shot. It's a simple shot, yeah. it's a basic shot, and you have to be able to play it. And the creativity, I think, watching from afar, like some of the older videos, not to put an age on you, but the older videos <laughs> well, that's fine. out there. That's all right. Um, and how he would chip and bump. It was, it's really easy to see the creativity of how he would look at shots. You know, there's technique we're going to talk about, but there's also game plan. There's the shot you sure. see, there's the shot you try and play. And I think to try and make a blanket statement, right, if we're going to make a sort of big picture blanket statement, you and I would say a couple things about the hitting chip shots, right? Number one would be a bump and run style play, which if we were to define bump and run, can we say a shot that rolls more than it flies in the air? No question. Something you like do that. not want backspin. Yeah. It's yes, a right. chip and run, <laughs> and run, not a chip and spin. And it spends more right. time on the ground maybe than in the air. No good? question about that. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we would say, A, this would be an easier shot to learn for most golfers relative to a, a sandwich or 60 degree that carries farther, right? Um, there's probably more margin for error. Uh, with it. Sure. And then I think in terms of actually playing it in a lot of circumstances, it makes more sense. No question. It's very simple. Yeah. And for those viewers watching that, that don't get to practice eight hours a day like the guys on right. tour, right. and they're trying to set their wrist and get the ball up in the air, there's a big margin there of skull and chunk. Yeah. Chip and run, I think anybody with any athletic ability that could maybe be in the verge of breaking 100 yeah. will love the shot, benefit from the shot, and shoot lower scores with a shot. No question about it. Perfect, love it. So we have a shot here, and we're probably, I don't know, maybe 20 yards from, uh, from that green. Yep. I probably have, I'll say, 60 to 65% of my shot has green, and maybe like 40, 35, 40% is, is fairway. But I have the whole green in front of me. 
I've got no bunker here. Yep, I don't yep. have any high ref. Yep. I have nothing that I need uh, or makes me need to carry the ball near the hole. This would be an easy way to start. You know, we'll talk about later. You can do this for a lot of places. Oh, sure, sure. But this would be an easy way to start to say, hey, before you go grab the sand wedge, which you could use, right? why don't we learn to do a shot with a seven iron or a nine iron or pitching wedge eight iron, um, get the ball on the ground and rolling and make it easier first, right? Um, get the ball on the green in one shot first, have a makeable putt first, and then we can kind of roll down and, and start to uh, learn the sand wedge shot. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So if we grab this club, I got a couple clubs here, they're a little dirty, but I'm gonna grab this <laughs> seven iron, which proves I was practicing that's a little nice, bit. That's nice, that's nice. Andrew uh, Rice wouldn't be happy with me with the dirty clubs, but <laughs> nonetheless, bump and run shot. Now I have a seven iron. I personally, we were talking off camera, right. um, would typically teach people to chip with a sand wedge, a nine iron, and a seven iron mm -hmm. to start. Mm -hmm. And if they like an eight iron instead, well, that's fine, whatever. Pitch, whatever. Right. Right. But with a seven iron, if I'm gonna chip a ball from here to there, um, I think we have three key points that we wanna talk about. If we were looking at the setup position first, mm -hmm. right, how I set up to the golf ball, let's go over a couple of just the main fundamental things. I'll kind of lead it off and sure, let me know if I'm sure. missing anything here. So if I were to go, and in fact, maybe it might be beneficial, if I were to take my normal chipping setup, I would probably set up for a sand wedge about like this, right? This would be about my sand wedge chip shot. Gotcha. Now, if I grab my seven iron, I'd go from here, my setup would be more like this. So now to, for you and me, kind of two noticeable adjustments is that I took the handle of my club mm -hmm. and I made that significantly more vertical. Right. right. And, I, and I did that primarily in, uh, for me so I could take a, a putting style grip. Of course, yeah, right? yep, yep. And so I prefer to have a putter grip um, compared to normal. So my shaft's a little more vertical, even as we talked about heel off the ground. Correct, that's just fine, that's just fine. Yeah. And then I'm gonna be pretty darn close to the ball with the shaft being up. Correct. Right. Feet are very close. Yeah, absolutely. Ball position, um, maybe just back of center? Slightly, yeah, yeah it goes center bit. to back. Yeah, yeah okay. So um, those would be some, and then maybe level shoulders? Yeah, we certainly wouldn't want a right shoulder lower than a left, because that would bring the ground into play before you hit the ball, we wouldn't want that. Got it. So, so level shoulders is good. Pretty level shoulders. Pressure. What do you like? Maybe like a 60 40? Favoring like the left. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So a little bit forward. Um, pretty neutral shaft from face on with a little lean or pretty neutral? Yeah, I think I would go for this particular shot probably neutral to slight lean. Yeah. I certainly wouldn't want it back, that's for sure. Got it. Um, but we don't want to bring too much shaft lean into play. We can talk about that later. But yep. I would say neutral would be good. And then you shared with me a little uh, tip before that mm -hmm. I, I wasn't doing it that I like. Um, would you share with, with everyone what that was? Sure, yeah, when we've got the club vertical, when this club is coming vertical, yep. the toe goes down, but what people tend to do is they still play the ball off the middle of the club. Yeah. I would put the ball also out towards the toe because the club, Eric, is creating a little bit of a V there. Yeah. So the sweet spot is kind of out of the picture because it's up and it's high. I like to play these chip and runs off the toe. And of course, when we talk about hitting balls off the toe, it doesn't spin as much. Bingo. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Because it's a chip and run, right? Well, it's right. a chip and run. So this would help you also get the roll you're looking for because the last thing you want to do is catch this thing dead in middle and hit down on it and the ball spins back. Exactly. Well, we can do that yep. at a later time. But for this particular shot, we're utilizing the contour of the ground. We'd want to lean towards getting the ball favoring, slightly favoring towards the toe. And Less then when you spin. hit the shot, you're gonna see this ball roll. Less spin, I like it, okay. Yeah. So let me try one first, and then we'll talk about some of the other sure, areas. Sure. But if I went through this, and I think for a lot of people who don't hit the bump and run, your feet need to be a lot closer than you think. <laughs> I'm talking maybe, I would say no more than maybe even a club head apart, very close. The shaft needs to be more vertical from down the line than you think if you're gonna have your putter grip, because I see a lot of people here, Robert, like this. No question. Right? Yeah. So I would rather them too close to the ball, if that's a thing. I mean, I'm standing here a grip away from the golf ball. Eric, the closer the better. Closer the better, yeah, Good. absolutely. So get in there close for the bump and run. I'm gonna have vertical. Now we'll talk about the in-swing. I'm gonna start with just the general idea that I feel like I'm making a, a, a putting stroke, but with a pivot if I was gonna say it like that. I love that. So when you make a putting stroke, you don't swing the head back and leave the handle, right? Yes. Correct? Correct. So we would tend to move the handle and the head at one. At the same space and time, right? It's not going this way. Yes. Because if this goes that way, the shaft leans forward. So it's more of a one unit type of swing. And we're gonna right. talk about that more in a second. 
So I'm going to think putting style. I'm going to put these Beautiful. centipedes in. I'm going off the toe because my mm -hmm. buddy said that that's a good idea. <laughs> you did. Less, um, a little bit less spin on there. Now, when I'm looking at this, I'm envisioning, and there's a whole other video we can do on, on that part, but I'm seeing the ball landing kind of just on the front, and then I see it rolling up by the hole. So I, I, I'm not hitting this blind. Part of the Seve piece and, and um, the creativity mm -hmm. is seeing the shot, being able to see that shot. Sure, sure. Now, depending upon someone's ability level, I would give them different tasks here. Of course. You and me may be going out and play. You probably beat me by a couple right now. Sure. Good but point. we're looking for, um, we're, we're, <laughs> I'm looking to get this close, right? Sure. And I'm not saying everyone shouldn't look to get it close, but someone who's looking to break 100, the objective in the beginning, if you haven't done this, you don't know how the ball comes off the seven iron, right? That's right. You don't know the That's speed. Right. You might hit one over the green. Get a, forget the flag, get a ball to finish in the middle of the green. We have a makeable putt. Start there. Can you do that one, two, three times in a row, right? It'd be a yeah, good absolutely. starting point. Absolutely, okay. yes. I don't mean to yell at you. I'm getting jacked no, up. No, so absolutely. <laughs> let's do a little bump and run. I'm going to do a putting stroke with a pivot, and I'm going to try and get the ball up there. I did my setup adjustments. I'll stop talking for a second. We'll hit a bump and run off the toe a little bit, and I'm going to feel a little bit of a putting stroke with a bump. Now, I didn't land that as far as I wanted. Right. And here's the whole point of this. Now, that was a bad shot for me. That's probably 12, 13 feet short of the pin. Not mm -hmm. good for me at all. Mm -hmm. But that to me is about as bad as I'm going to do with this. There's no question. The yeah. margin for error in that shot, had you made the same swing with a sand wedge, ball right would here. have been right there, right? Exactly. Fair enough. 100%. So the average golfer who's watching that shoots between 90 to 100, yeah. if you can't take a seven iron, and chip and roll it onto the middle of a big green. Yes. Then, then that would be that. That would be your first task. Bingo. Figure that out first, and then watch the difference in the roll of the ball, based on the number of the club. For example, let's say you're using a seven iron. Obviously, you'd land the ball a little closer to the edge of the fringe because it would run more. Then you would, if you want to play a bump around with an eight, you hit it a little further up. Right. A nine, it a little further up. So, but you've got to learn that basic skill set first. Yes. Get a club you like, it might be a six or seven, and see what it does. See how far it flies compared to how much it rolls. Learn as you're doing it. Learn that, yeah. and then you'll find a favorite club. Yeah. It might be an eight iron. For me, it, in particular, it's a, it's a nine iron, actually. I like the nine iron because I feel like, in most cases, it's almost 50-50 run yeah. and fly, almost. It's right around there, depending on the speed of the greens. Love it. So get a favorite club and yeah. try to hit it on the middle of a green. Yeah. Don't try to hit it in a four and a quarter inch hole. Not so I, yet. I love that to start with. I think the general first idea, and then we're going to talk the, the rest of this, is you should learn how to play a bump and run, right? Let's find a club that we like to start with. Learn how to get the ball on the green first. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about the rest of the bump and run. All right. So part number two, um, which I guess is less of a checkpoint and more of a a feel and a philosophy, we would say, is let's differentiate this bump and run from a chip shot. Mm -hmm. So when I'm doing my sand wedge, in very simple terms, that's my nine iron, in very simple terms, when I'm doing my sand wedge shot, if I were going here, because I need to get the ball up in the air and carry farther, I, during my backswing, am going to add some hinge. Correct. I'm going to add a hinge Correct. component. And I'll say make a longer swing. Gotcha. Like kind of those two pieces. Gotcha. Get the ball, go in the air and farther. So this backswing I would normally make where I'm hinging and adding a, a lever in there mm -hmm. right, would be our basic chip shot. Right. But when we're doing our bump and run, we don't really want to do that. We really don't. And if you notice when you hinged, you added loft and the yeah. toe started to point up towards the sky. You wouldn't want to do that with a chip shot right. because we want to be a putting stroke. And I don't remember the last time Eric opened the face of his putter and added loft coming back. Yeah, I, was seen, yeah. I got to see that then. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, you're correct. It's yeah. Like, yeah, very different. So, so when we're doing the bump and run, I think is a good elementary thought process would be that we're trying to get the butt of the club and then by definition, the hands and let's say the body or the belt buckle. Like I like to think the grip and the belt buckle mm -hmm. to basically be moving at the same rate. Absolutely. Right? So if my, as my belt buckle moves, I guess it's as my grip moves, my belt buckle is going to move back. What feels like together, one piece, et cetera, right? Yeah, it's a slight pivot going back with the handle and the head moving at the same pace. Yeah. And we're not letting the head get away from the handle, if that makes sense. And you know what? Actually, a better way to say it. So, I, and I think there's two parts to that. So, what I'm saying is this and this going, but what you're saying I think is even better, which is I'm not trying to let the club head, so from face on here, this would be the club head 
going back without my handle going back. That is correct. Right, got it. That is correct. What we're trying to do is get this and this. As one unit. As one unit. Yeah. And then if I add a little bit of pivot with it. Beautiful. Got it. Beautiful. So maybe it's club head, butt of the club, belt buckle, kind of working as one. Right. Not a we, large amount of hip turn, but, but something. I like to refer to that. Go ahead and set up again, Eric. Yeah. I like to refer to that as pizza the, right, pizza left. Got it. This is a slice of pizza, and your viewers can see that. There's a slice of pizza right here. Yep. I like pepperoni and stuff. Yep, so yep. so yep. go ahead and swing back. You've moved that pizza to the right and yep. then swing through, and you've moved the pizza to the left. Got pizza, it. pizza. Yep. Pizza Perfect. right, pizza we left. We had another video coming up that got a little pizza in it, ironically. Nah. <laughs> so um, I love that. I think it's a beautiful visual. I think a lot of people that I see do this, and in general, chipping could even use some of that. Okay. They get club head and nothing else. Not good. Yeah, not, not good. good. So our general idea is going to be this. Now, maybe one simple feel you showed me earlier, mm -hmm. right, would be if I took the butt of the club, put it into my uh, stomach. And just pivot. And, and I go from here, and then, I, and then I go with it. And that's going to really force those things to happen. I love the concept of the club head and the grip working at the same rate. Right. And listen, for some people who don't do that, that's going to feel really bizarre and oh, weird. Oh, sure it is, sure it is. It might feel like the handle for, if you're going like this, it's going to feel like the handle's leading going back. Very strange feel at yeah. first compared to when you're hitting full shots. Yeah. But this is a chip and run. And the so best different. way to me, I preach in all of our videos, like you, you record it, okay? Record yourself hitting the chip shot. Live view would be perfect. And you could see, oh my gosh, even though it feels like, what the heck, I'm dragging the handle back. No, right? That's just actually working in one piece back. So That's nonetheless, right. let me see if I can beat 13 feet. Sure. So I'm going to get my setup pieces good again. The things I took from us are, okay, I need to stand very close to the ball. I need the shaft vertical. Those are two things. Toe right? down. Ball position, toe down. Right. A little bit off the toe. Correct. Uh, ball position is neutral. Shaft is pretty neutral. Maybe slightly more on my left. Correct. And I'm feeling from here my club head and hands working back together yes. with a little bit of a pivot. We'll talk about the follow through in a minute. Beautiful. Feeling some things in there you told me too. Got it. Got so it. So a little bit off the toe. I'm going to feel a little bit of working together. I'm feeling a little bit of pizza. I hit that pretty close to where I wanted. Mm, nice. Nice. Now, I didn't do a good job of what I said before. I didn't spend time visualizing the shot there, the creativity I lost a little. But in terms of execution, I did there um, what I wanted to. Now, there's a setup. Right. There's a backswing. There's a follow through. Let's talk about that in gotcha. a minute. All right, so we have a setup. We got the backswing. But there is a, a follow through component. Mm -hmm. And so for someone learning the bump and run, what would be kind of the top one or two things with the follow, just general con, uh, conception of what I want to be able to do into the follow through. What most players do when I play in these pro -ams and I see a player trying to play a bump and run is that they would tend to swing down to the target. And when I say that, it almost makes sense that it should be that way. Well, shouldn't you swing to the target? Right. But the club is only on the target line a very short period of time. It's the pivot that takes it around to the left. So down the target line from this view would be like this. Right. So see yeah. what happened, how this lowered right. and this all collapsed. Yep. So what we wouldn't want to do that. We would want to stay tall through the ball. We'd want to stay extended Got through it. the ball. And the feeling would be letting the belly button and the, the, the grip of the club, the cap of the club work in unison. Perfect. That's such a good thought for someone who's learning the basics of a chip and run yeah. would be, can I, on the exit, I want to turn to the left and I want to make sure the shaft is pointing down. Remember, we're playing a chip and run. It's not deviating up. Oh, that's it's, good. Okay. It's pointing down towards the ground as we exit. It's very, very important, Eric, that you pivot and turn on the exit. Correct. And Got it's it. pointing down. So when I come through, that's beautiful. When I come through, I'm getting a sensation that my, this work with a bigger belly too, smaller belly, no big well, deal. Well, you've not got that problem okay. at 31 years so of age. So normal belly. You're 85 like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> normal belly works okay. I'm going, um, beautiful. I'm turning through here. Now, I really like that club head is at the ground. It's, yes, it's pointing down. It's, pointing it's down. not yeah. deviating. It's not up. It's not up. There is a whole series yeah, on another shot yeah there's another shot that's <laughs> yeah. not the chip and run shot got it so getting the club pointing down as you're standing tall and you're rotating through it is a great that's feeling perfect. for this chip and run it really is it's a freedom to let the club head swing yep. as it points downwards and the body rotate it's beautiful perfect. it's so, beautiful so i love those so when i come through and we're giving checkpoints you don't have to necessarily think about every single thing we talk about. There's a checkpoint to see if you need to use these things. So when I come through here, I have the club head pointed down. I'm staying tall. Love that one. Mm -hmm. Staying up and tall. I'm not trying to go down. My hands in the club have traveled to the left 
of the ball from the pivot. No question about yeah, that. This is pivot. this is not from the arms pulling in. Right. It's from the body turning. And when you look down the line, when you the camera's down the line, even on this little chip and run, yeah. when the camera's down the line, yeah. there is no way I'm putting the club right in line with the ball right here to the target. You're never going to touch that club. Right. If you did touch that club, That's a nice one. it would bring the hustle into play. Yeah. And I don't know if your viewers know this, but this is ill-designed to hit a golf ball off because it's round. A of them have found they that probably out, yeah. know that, right? <laughs> so when you're swinging the club to the right, yeah. it probably means that you would have to rotate. Now, go ahead and make the same swing with your arms and rotate. Now you pull the club around to the left. Yeah. Most of my students that first learn this in the chip and run would say, well, why does the ball not go to the left if you're swinging to the left? It doesn't because you've the ball's gone already. Yep, exactly. Right? So... That's, I think that's a beautiful yeah, visual. Yeah. And I don't think a lot of people think about that. I like that. Probably so not. let's do one where I uh, hit. Now I got 13-ish. We're going to call that six. That's, I'm due for three. You're right? beautifully three. average right now. So, I love it. <laughs> I'm going to focus on this one on my follow through. I'm going to feel this turn. Yep. I feel like I'm staying tall. Now I do a lot of this normally, right? But oh, Of course you do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to feel the club head down. I'm going to feel the turn. Um, on my way through here and let that go to left. I'm going to do a little bit of job of visualization here. Okay. Again, depending upon my current skill level, my objective is. So let's go <laughs> ahead and try one. So I hit that pretty close to where I wanted. Now I got a bum little hop there. I don't know if everyone saw it. Yeah, so, that was nothing to do with skill. That was all the ground that caused that. Yeah. Now, yeah. what I see as I'm doing this too is I would potentially play a different shot here for me. Right. That's a separate conversation. But what just happened there for... 80 plus percent of golfers, I think would be a great step one. Get the ball on the ground, get the ball into the middle of the green, right? right? Um, it's a simpler shot to do. Let's just quickly go over this one more time, even though I think that was very super simple. We have three key checkpoints here. Yep. Setup position, shaft is very vertical. I'm close to the ball. Those are kind of the main ones. Yep. When I make my backswing, the club head and the grip are trying to move at one rate as I go back. That's correct. It's like a putting stroke with a pivot. When I come through, I'm trying to keep my body turning with a reasonable size belly, club head at the ground, and my chest is up towards the sky. I, those are foundational principles of basic chip and run. That, yep. that was perfect. So perfect. what I would do, guys, when you watch this is, uh, I would record, right? So if I'm, if, now if you come out here and you do a bump and run and you're great at it, that's excellent. Depending upon your skill level, do what Robert and I said. Pick a club, find a club, try some clubs and see how far they go. And then if you're not used to doing a bump and run, forget the fly, get the ball to finish in the middle of the green. Do that two or three times in a row. When that gets easy, make your, your barrier a little harder sure. on the back half of the green and keep going. So I hope you guys learn from this. I hope you guys learn from Robert. I hope you guys learn from Seve in that you can hit this shot and you can hit it from a lot of different circumstances. So I hope you guys found this to be helpful. I hope you learned this. And Mr. Robert, thank you, man. Absolutely. My fun. pleasure. Thanks, thank you. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you like this video, I know you're gonna love this video, how to chip like the pros. It's all about getting better at chipping in solid contact. Go ahead and check that out and click that and watch that. While you're here, click the like button down below. Click the notification bell. Also, please subscribe. Thank you guys for watching.